Hello, and welcome to the video companion for the Talking Time Let's Play of Final Fantasy XIV, A Realm Reborn. I'm McDole, and today we are tackling the Sunken Temple of Karn. The Immortal Flames have recruited Sots and Suisse to lead a team of adventurers to explore the Sunken Temple of Karn. In doing so, they hope to make the temple safe for archaeologists to study the old Veladian culture, which was destroyed in the Sixth Umbral Calamity, the one before Bahamut. Incidentally, this Umbral Calamity is also known as the War of the Magi. Final Fantasy VI, anyone? The war ended up not only destroying Belladia, but also the other Eorzean nations of the Fifth Astral Era, including some of the names that we'll become familiar with in later contexts. Scala, Nim, Andapur, Mach. Essentially, it was a case of a Cold War turning hot, with the escalation of magical weapons and the etheric equivalent of biological weaponry. All this enraged the elemental spirits and created a powerful, unaspected elemental that destroyed Aeorius civilizations in a massive flood. Eventually, the waters receded and gave rise to the city-state as we now know. The Sunken Temple is a winding passage of trapped corridors, ancient evil spirits, and puzzles to suss out. It's like a Tomb Raider level imported into Final Fantasy XIV. Right away, I have to acknowledge that this dungeon is higher level than where we have progressed in the main story. Totorak is set at level 24, and the Sunken Temple is at level 35, sinking up to level 37. And this is where the game starts taking the kid gloves off. Not entirely, mind you, but just enough to be a wake-up call if you start getting complacent from the relative snorefests of Halatali or Totorak. The to to two dungeons before this one in the level progression, Hawk Manor and Bright Fox's Longstop, also present new and interesting challenges, but I'm getting ahead of myself. We'll cover those in the next update. The first up on this challenge is the Karn Facer. This thing will run away and make life annoying in the later dungeons, but it is quite possible to kill it immediately and will even drop a treasure box with this some loot in it if you kill it here. But the more dangerous elements of this room and throughout the rest of the dungeon are the Temple Beats. If you started in Limsa Luminsa, you might have already encountered B-type enemies, but this will likely be a player's, player's first encounter with them. When they get low on health, they begin to cast Final Sting. This attack will sacrifice the bee's life to deal 80% of a target's maximum hit points to whoever's got the most threat on it. If there are other monsters hitting that same person, like, say, a tank, then the tank can drop in, a blink, in the blink of an eye, causing a panic-induced scramble followed by a party wipe. Fun times. You'll notice that I'm moving around these early chambers and picking up stone tablets. These tablets are used to solve puzzles deeper in the dungeon that open up optional chambers with additional treasure. Shortly into the temple, we come across the first boss, Terra Totor, a void scent beastie that comes with its own suite of nasty things. First, a point blank AoE called Frightful Roar that causes a physical damage vulnerability. Then there's Mo, a comal attack that causes poison. And then periodically during the fight, he summons two B adds that, of course, have final sting in their repertoire. But the most rid rude trick up this guy's sleeve is Mortal Flay, which hits everyone in the room with a Doom Countdown, a Final Fantasy series classic debuff. When the Doom Clock runs out, you die. A lot of different enemies in this game have different ways of dealing with the Doom, but this one is not cleansable with Ezina. Instead, each player must run to one of three floor panels. Whichever one is lit up and step on the panel cleans it.
Whew, that's a lot, eh? Other than that, though, just keep hitting the boss until it stops moving. Easy peasy, right? Shortly after we get to the boss's chamber, we come up on the main puzzle gimmick of this dungeon. The Art of Warpois. I guess that's how you pronounce it. The idea is in order for the thing to stay dead, you need to gra drag the big stone head onto the floor panels and kill them there. If you don't, the doors don't open and you have to sit there waiting like a chump until it gets back up and then you can kill it again in the correct spot. Opening up this door immediately aggroes two more stone heads, and again, the only way for them to stay dead, as well as open way to fabulous treasure, or tablets that lead to fabulous treasure, is to drag them on the panels and kill them there. Oops. Specifically, behind the two doors these stone heads guard are chambers containing two tablets, the Flame of Magic and the Fruit of Knowledge. You'll want to take both of these as they'll be useful later on. A few more trash monsters, and below, in the lower sanctum, we find the second boss of the dungeon, the Temple Guardian. This golem is powered by a soul stone in the center of its chest that you'll have to damage in order to make the golem actually vulnerable. When the soul stone is gone, the golem will be incapacitated, you get a good 20 or so seconds to wail on it as hard as you can. DPS should save whatever burst abilities they have, and tanks should save their damage up skills like fight or flight for this window. For the party with on-point DPS, it's possible to get this down in only two cycles. The other annoying thing about this guy is he likes to ignore the hell out of the aggro table and will turn away from the tank to go punch another player and stun them or do any number of obnoxious things.
With all of that out of the way, our party returns to the upper level. And this is where those tablets I told about you about will come in handy. On either side of the path forward, conveniently blocked by another stone head, there are two shuttered doors. If you place one of the four tablets from before in the pedestals, they'll open the way to treasure. Just match up the symbols. Another thing of note is that the crocodile monsters in this part of the dungeon have a tail swipe attack that they like to use when someone is hanging out on their rear, such as a greedy DPS looking for those tasty positional bonuses. Through this hallway is a final puzzle to be solved once you've cleared out all of the monsters. You need to place two of the tablets in the pans and then tip the scales of judgment. Doing this correctly will open up the way to the final boss as well as a secret side chamber that has treasure in it. Doing it incorrectly will lock off the treasure and you'll have to kill more monsters. I'm not entirely sure where the in-game explanation of how this puzzle solution is derived, but it has been indelibly marked upon my memory by a, a fellow member of the Talking Time Free Company, the Talking Tyrants, Banak. Once upon a time, when ARR was young and new, Banak and Gare were working their way through this dungeon, and Banak remarked that the solution to this puzzle was, and I'm quoting by a second-hand account, a flaming fruit just like me. The fit of laughter was something to behold and has been passed down in Talking Tyrant myth, legend, and myth. Suffice to say, the solution is, as Bonoxman mnemonic would suggest, to place the Flame of Magic tablet on the left, place the Fruit of Knowledge tablet on the right, then tip the scales of justice to open the door. The final boss of the Sunken Temple is this statue, the Adjudicator. He uses a lot of elements from previous fights in this very dungeon and remixes them in unique ways. Before that we go fight the guy, we need to collect our wonderful treasure. First, he'll summon a smaller stone head ad, but by this point in the dungeon, you already know what to do with this thing. Kill it on a floor panel to make it stay dead. Next, he'll start calling out these staves that will fire laser beams at random players. Staves can be destroyed and can and should be, as they can explode and damage everyone. 
the Mithril Verges will get more and more crazy as the fight goes on. Periodically during the fight, we'll also attempt to silence the healer, making it so that they can't heal for a time. It's interruptible, so tanks and ranged DPS should be ready to stop it with their interrupt roll actions. Next, he'll throw a curveball at the Mist of Verges. There'll be a square barrier around it that will seal off. The DPS can go into that barrier to kill the Verge to prevent it from exploding. When the boss gets down to about 25%, He'll spawn four final Mithril Verges for one last ditch effort to kill everybody. Just keep pouring on the damage and you'll be triumphant. that that's all she wrote for this dungeon thank you so much for watching this video the link for the let's play will be in the description below and as always thank you for watching and may you ever walk in the light of the crystal